Mic check one two three. Mic check one two three. What's up, buddy? It's Z Will back here with another video. It's currently 5 a.m. November the 13th here on a Saturday. I'm getting ready to head to Rockingham. I'm getting my stuff packed up right now. I'm going to Rockingham Speedway for the first time. I'm looking forward to this a lot. Let's go ahead and get right into this. just up here. We're here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. About to actually go right onto the track almost. <laughs> well, here's rock. Here's the rock. I got to drive on Rockingham Speedway. Wow, it's cool. I've been around these cars since I was 
that little tiny kid. And I've always had this running joke about if I could ever find a real Rusty Wallace roller coaster, I'd find a car. Not thinking I would ever actually find the car. And about a year and a half ago, we found the car uh, just a little bit west of Chicago. And we drove up there and got it. And I remember doing a bunch of research. We found out that this car was a camera car and a backup, like a, a screen use car that Dave was trying to purchase the car from the auction and did get sold all through the car. And uh, with that, I also spoke to a gentleman who worked for Hendrick and he worked for Paramount. And he told me that when they were filming the movie and making the cars for the movie, that they would go around and buy the old show cars out from all the teams. So they went to Blue Max Racing and they bought the car, the show cars from Blue Max. And the history from what Blue Max had the car is kind of up in the air. It could have been a good Richmond car at some point, it could have been a Korea or Rusty Ball car at some point. We don't really know yet. I bought the car, and when I bought the car, I really didn't have any idea of what I was going to do with it. I just kept wanting the car. And uh, Keith Fredick, which owns this uh, system on the Grand Prix, we've been friends for years. And uh, me and him were talking, and me and him went to drill at a motorsports park about a year ago, and we were hanging out with Chris from Whiteside, which is the president of this now Slot Car Classics group. Uh, we got involved, and it was the three of us, and it snowballed pretty quickly. And we started off with like five cars, and we've got 20. What's happening? These cars out there in their barns and their garages, there's a way to use them, enjoy them. That's kind of what our whole idea was to bring the cars out, be safe with them, and to have a good time and respect everybody's stuff and don't get them done. Because, I mean, these things are achievable, we want to go But we're also trying to put them back on the track so everybody can enjoy them. So, my last question for you uh, for the viewers at home, what is it like to? Run around this track here at It's fun, it's a blast. It's an old track, it hasn't been paved in a long time, so it's very dirty, it's very funky, but it's very fun at the same time. I'm here with Cody Dennison here at Rockingham Speedway. Currently, there's oil on the track, fixing the track yeah. up right now. Yeah, so, so we were running, and uh, I was hauling out, I was giving the beans. And somebody dropped oil, and I went right for it, and I was terrified. But we ended up making it through. But yeah, they're cleaning it up now, and it's gonna take forever, unfortunately. So I mean, I saw it pop up online. My dream for since I was probably 12 years old was to own one of these cars, drive it. Never thought it was gonna happen, but it popped up on RacingJunk.com, and I went for it. Drove to North Carolina and picked it up, and it was awesome. Really, uh, really cool. And then, with, there was a lot of stuff that needed to be done with it because you know, it, whatever track it came off of back in the day is what it was set up for. So I had to change out a arm, spring, shocks, switches, everything you can imagine. But it's pretty much up to scuff now. You have a YouTube channel of Camelot 331. That's it. And you, you do a lot of gaming stuff, but you've also done NASCAR videos and all that. And you recently went to Daytona and you had a video that went really well. Well, but yeah. you, you wrecked. Yeah. Can you tell I mean, us a little bit more about I'm that? I'm not going to lie and say it wasn't because the title said I wrecked. <laughs> and then I wrecked. So, I mean, that's probably why I did well. But, yeah, we had a lot of fun at Daytona. And um, I learned a lot of stuff. But, you know, same thing. Somebody dropped some oil. I hit the wall. wasn't too bad. We got it fixed. And um, I had a lot of help from my community. So, it was taken care of. And we went to Charlotte and now here. So, it all worked out. How long have you been doing YouTube? And is this something that you do, like, full time? Yeah, so... I started at the end of 2019 and just for fun, started talking about like old stories and job stories and stuff. And, uh, out of nowhere, it kind of took off and, you know, I've been doing it for full time two years now. We're about to hit 200,000 subs, which is unbelievable. I never even thought I'd have like a thousand. So, um, yeah, that's what I do full time every day. And then I started getting bored with my content, you know, kind of, you know, not bored with it, but I want to do other stuff. So I started racing and playing games and, I can't make up my mind, apparently. <laughs> you ran earlier uh, beside Mike Harmon. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? He actually hit the wall. Mike you, Harmon hit the wall, really? Yeah, and you I were behind not. him for some of the <laughs> first run. Yeah, I was I was trying to keep up with him. I love Mike Harmon. I've always been a fan of Mike Harmon. So when I saw him walking up and I saw a sweet mullet, I was like, oh, my God. So I had to give him a hug, <laughs> take a picture with him. But, yeah, we were running out there, and um, he's a little bit faster than us just because confidence levels are coming off the corner. But 
You know, it's awesome. It's awesome to just be out here with that guy, let alone everybody here is awesome. So. Yeah, and how how did Phil run around the track? Have you been here before to Rockingham? It's, yeah, this is my first time, and it just seems like no matter how hard I throw it into the corners, it just sticks. So that's pretty interesting. That's a new thing I've never experienced, so it's really exciting. For the viewers at home, uh, do you have any advice for someone who's maybe getting started with YouTube or content creating? Yeah, um, the, the, easiest, the easiest thing that to do, or the easiest thing to be successful, is have high quality audio, high quality video, you know, just, just quality, and just be consistent with your uploads. That's it. Doesn't matter what you're talking about, you can be talking about chess for some reason. <laughs> E5 to something. And uh, if you're consistent, you should do well. I can't. No, I haven't. Oh, cool. Yeah, there's six of them all across the country, so this oh. is the southeast Wienermobile. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I've seen pictures, but not a person before. Yeah. It was cold earlier now. It's I just know, like I'm 80 like, degrees. The sun is just. Hey yo. Oh, Lordy, I'm up. <laughs> Go up there. Yo. What animal are you? Uh, like a Jeff Gordon mascot thing. That's quite interesting. You have the rainbow water colors. Suck to sell. I was Chuck E. Cheese one time when I was younger. <laughs> no kidding. Same thing. Really? Yeah. yeah. Also, the track that day was Motorfest at Thunder Alley Motorsport for the Masses, and they had a car show there, a Christmas craft and merchandise fair, there was the 8th annual Christmas charity toy drive for smiling while sending hope, there's a silent auction, they have food trucks there, it was just an awesome event. Now, for those who aren't familiar with smiling while sending hope, they are a nonprofit that benefits people from birth to age 26 that have chronic illnesses and special needs. Now, the founder of Smiling While Sending Hope is Katie Haynes, and she came on Saturday and actually shared her story before all the activities that day. And she's not letting her illnesses stop her from doing what she wants to do. She's going to school, actually, to become a professional photographer, and she one day dreams to work for Disney World or NASCAR. It's pretty incredible, and she's inspiring a lot of people, and... Her goal with this project is basically to bring smiles to people's faces and to help spread awareness of the many illnesses and diseases that we see in the world. Um, her story is really inspiring and it's really awesome to see the impact that they are having and it, it's just incredible. So I thought I should share that in this video as well. Now, towards the end of the day, as people were leaving, some people actually got to drive around the track, and I actually got to as well. So, Mitchell Stapleton, he was driving this car around the track, and I actually got to go out right behind him. So, I got to go around the track about four or five laps in my Dodge. Now, since I wasn't able to have anyone film me while I went around the track, I set up one of my cameras in the car, but I forgot to close my window, so it messed the audio up a little bit. Now, I didn't go too fast because I wanted to be safe, and I, I didn't want to hold my phone and record, and I had my camera set up, but I also had to make sure it was on and off. Man, this day flew by, man. Wow. Uh, what an incredible day. 100,000 miles. Let's go. Woo. Yes, this weekend I hit 100,000 miles in my 1997 Dodge Intrepid on the way to Rockingham. So, man, it's 
really special. I love this car so much. I've been through a lot of good and bad with it. It's just so special, and to be able to reach this landmark at the rock of all places is just really awesome. Now, before I end this video, I just want to say thank you very much to everyone who made this event possible. It was an incredible day, one of the best days of my life. Um, I thank all the people at Stock Car Classics and being able to meet them, being able to video alongside Cody, and being able to meet Mitchell Stapleton, Mike Harmon, and there's just so many people there that... I'm very thankful I got to meet, and I also want to say thank you to Mike and Joe for letting me interview them, and I'm very thankful that I was allowed to come video that day, and it, it was just so awesome. Just thank you to everybody.